Recently, Donald Trump prayed with his wife in front of the shrine of John Paul II. Is this what the Bible predicted would happen? Did the Bible predict that the United States of America and the papacy will play a vital role in the final events of this world's history? If you are looking for answers to these questions, then look no further. George W. Bush and Bill Clinton and George Bush Sr. all knelt in front of this dead Pope. And now Donald Trump prayed in front of him too. Is this what the Bible said would happen? Well, starting on Friday the 26th of June, I will do a live Zoom Bible study with 10 participants. The study will be every Friday at the same time. Because of time zones and availability, I've decided to have two studies on a Friday. One will take place at 12.30 p.m. GMT plus 2 is the time zone. The other will take place at 1900 hours or 7 p.m. GMT plus 2. Currently, there are seven participants already signed up and there are only 13 seats left. 10 seats in the afternoon, 10 seats in the evening. We will study 10 studies, one study a week. And within these 10 studies, we will find out what is God's last warning for this world. If you sign up for these studies, if you are part of the 10, either in the afternoon or in the evening, that will sit in the Zoom meeting, you will get free access to the following. You will receive a certificate at the end of the 10 studies, when you've completed all 10, signed by our ministry. The Zoom meetings will also be recorded and you will get free access to all 10 of these Zoom meetings. You will also get exclusive links to my God's Last Warning series, a five presentation series that I will send the exclusive link only to the participants that was within the study. You will also have access to a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute Zoom meeting session with myself where I will answer your personal questions that you don't want to ask in front of the 10 participants. You will also be put on our mailing list and you will get our latest monthly newsletter where we send you all the links as to what we are doing and what's happening in our ministry. So what will we study during these 10 weeks? Where in the book of Revelation can you find the last warning for God's people? But before I tell you where it is and what that warning is, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you've not done so yet. Click on subscribe and then choose all and you'll receive all the latest content that our ministry uploads onto YouTube. If you are watching this video and it's later than the 26th of June and we've already studied, started the 10 studies, then I've got good news. Once we are done with the first lot of 10 studies, we will start the next lot soon after. And all those details will be given on our YouTube channel. So subscribe if you haven't done so yet. So let's look at the message to God's people and to the world in the last days. These messages are called the three angels or the three angels messages. In Revelation chapter 14, 1 to 5, you read about a group of people that God has during the last days, the 144,000. If you've not watched that video yet, 7 Facts About 144,000, then click the link above or look in the description below and you will find the link to that video. Then Revelation 14, 6 to 12 contains the message that this group of people will take to the world just before Jesus returns. How do we know this? Verses 14 to 20 in Revelation 14 talks about Jesus coming upon the clouds with a sharp sickle in his hand. This is the end of the world. If you've not seen the message yet, the end of the world, once again, click on the link, the video that we have done. Uh, how will this world end based upon the second coming of Christ? Or look in the description below and you will be able to watch that video. The interesting thing about the book of Revelation is that it's written in a chiastic way. You see, a chiasm is a literary device in which a sequence of ideas is presented and then repeated in the reverse order. The result is a mirror effect as the ideas are reflected back in the passage. Each idea is connected to its reflection by a repeated word, often in a related form. 
The term chiasm comes from the Greek letter chi, which looks like our letter X. Chiastic pattern is also called the ring structure. So that's the basic definition for a chiasm. So let me give you an example. If you read Revelation chapter 1 and you read Revelation chapter 22, you will find similarities, words that are repeated, but in reverse order. And it helps us to better understand each of the chapters. Like Jesus says, behold, I'm coming in Revelation chapter 1 and in chapter 22, he says, behold, I'm coming. So the book of Revelation is written in this chiastic form. Another example of this is when John wrote about the seven churches of Revelation. They are also written in a chiastic form. Let me give you an example. If you read the church of Ephesus and Laodicea, you would say that there are many words and phrases that point to each other. The same with Smyrna and Philadelphia, Pergamos and Sardis, and then Thyatira. Do you guys see the X form in the slide? So this is the chiasm. With the church of Thyatira standing on its own, and it's the longest message to all of the seven churches given to the church of Thyatira. So this is the way the book of Revelation is written. You go from chapter 1, chapter 22. As you go up with the chiasm, you get to the center of the book, and there you find the climax. There you find the message that God wants us to know in chapters 12, 13, and 14 of the book of Revelation. Chapter 12 is about the history of God's church. A woman represents a church in Bible prophecy. And the Revelation 12 follows the chronological order of God and events that follows in the, the life of God's church. From the Old Testament right until the New Testament, until we, where we are until this day. Revelation 12, 17 then ends... The last verse of Revelation 12 says, The dragon was wroth with the woman and meant, went to make war of the remnant of her seed. So here the Bible tells us that the dragon, the devil, is now angry with this woman. Revelation 13 is then an answer as to what the devil would do to take out his anger upon the woman. Then it talks about the Antichrist beast, Revelation chapter 1 to verse 10. Then in verse 11, it talks about another beast coming out of the earth. And this beast helps the first beast and it leads the whole world to worship the first beast. And the first beast received its power from the dragon. So obviously people are then worshiping the dragon itself. So who is the first beast? Who is the second beast? The mark of the beast is mentioned in Revelation chapter 13. The image of the beast is mentioned. All of these issues, all of these things that the devil use to attack God's people. But praise the Lord for Revelation chapter 14. It is God's answer to the devil's work in chapter 13. You have the 144,000 verses 1 to 5. Then the message, verse 6 to 12. And then verses 14 to 20, Jesus returns. Let's read it together. Revelation 14, 14 to 20. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like the son of man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap for the time has come for you to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. For he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the altar, who had power over fire. And he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for a grape are fully ripe. So the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth, and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trampled outside the city, and blood came out of the winepress up to the horse's bridles for 1,600 furlongs. So here the Bible says Jesus is going to come and he's going to gather the harvest, the wheat into his barns, meaning the righteous are going to heaven, and the wicked will be trampled underfoot. This is the second coming of Christ. What is the message that precedes the climax of the ages? Jesus coming to end this world. Revelation 14, 6 to 12. Then I saw another angel. Angel means messenger. Flying in the midst of heaven, meaning this message moves with speed. Having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth. To every nation, tribe, tongue and people. He needs to go to everyone. Saying with a loud voice, here is the message. 
Here is the everlasting gospel. Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. It's not something in the future. The judgment has come, according to Revelation. And worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or in his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. This is how important this message is. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image. And whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So in summary, when we look at these three angels, what can we gather from them? What will we study within these 10 studies? And this is the summary, what we will look at in these 10 studies. Number one, we will look at the everlasting gospel because the first angel says the everlasting gospel will go to all the world. What do you and I need to be saved? Number two, this, the first angel says, fear God and give Him glory. Once we are saved, how do we fear God? How do we give Him glory? This is what we want to know. Number three, the Bible warns us against the Antichrist, the beast. We will identify the Antichrist. We will also ask the question, will, when will the Antichrist arise? Is it somewhere in the past? Is it somewhere in history? Or is it somewhere in future? We will also look at the seal of God because the Revelation 7 says the 144,000 has the seal of God in their foreheads. And then Revelation chapter 14 says it's the Father's name. What does this represent? We will see what this is. Then we will study the mark of the beast. So much confusion about the mark of the beast. We will see what the Bible has to say about the mark of the beast. And then once we've identified the beast, we will ask the beast, what is your mark? Then the sixth study, we will look at the second beast of Revelation 13. The one that comes out of the earth in verse 11 and helps the first beast and gives the first beast back its power through the image of the beast. We will study what that, who that beast is. We will study about the image of the beast. What is the image of the beast? Then we will look at Babylon is fallen. Who is Babylon? And what does she represent? We read about her in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. And then in the study number 8, we will look at Babylon's wine. This woman has a cup in her hand. And inside this cup, there is wine. What does that wine represent? And how has she given this to the world to drink and made the whole world spiritually drunk? Then we will look at the judgment hour. The first angel said, that the hour of his judgment has come. When did this judgment start? What does it represent? This is what we will look at in the Bible. And then our final study is Revelation's remnant. Revelation 14, 12 says, Here are the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Revelation 12, 17 says, The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant, the last people of God. Who are they? When we track Revelation chapter 12, what has happened to God's church and where is she today? God has one bride, not a thousand, not ten thousand, not many. He's not a polygamist. He has got one bride. Who is she according to scripture? When we follow the chronology, what has happened to her? Where is she today? All of this will be studied in these 10 studies. What are the prerequisites for you to join? Well, you need to send us an email. Send us an email to the email below. And then tell us, what time do you prefer? If there are seats left, do you prefer 12.30 p.m. GMT plus 2? Or 7 p.m. GMT plus 2? Then you need to watch the following video. Just click on the link, how to study the Bible. It's very important. The principles shared in there, we will use within these studies. And then finally, when, once you've sent us the email, I will send you an email back to confirm your space. And with a Bible study on the book of Daniel, one study 
of one chapter in the book of Daniel. It's a very important study that lays the foundation for some of the things we are going to study. We cannot squeeze that into the 10 studies too. So you need to do that one study. That is it. Send me an email. Watch one video. If you've watched it already, you don't have to watch it again. And do the study on Daniel. It's just two pages. It's not long. You just do it. It's just for foundation. That is it. And you've got access to this free online Bible school. My friends, do you want to know what the last warning to the world is? Then now is the time to sign up for this Bible study. Hosea 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. We are will gain knowledge from these studies. And Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Not everyone who says to be Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So I can put it in these words. Not all Christians will go to heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I, Jesus, will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Remember the group in Revelation 14, 12? Here are the, the patients of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And Jesus says that on the upper side, those that break the commandments will not see the kingdom. My friends, you're invited to these exciting studies. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and be updated. We're still uploading a video once a week. Even though the Bible studies will start, we're still uploading once a week. May God bless you as you consider this important question. Will you join studies? Your eternal life depends upon this knowledge you will receive.